Welcome to Design Nations, and in this uh, part two of the of this playlist, we are looking at creating um, a wireframe LED light. So we've got this wireframe image here of a skull, and I'm wanting to be able to take this out of Fusion 360 and put it into a TechSoft Design in our case, and then laser engrave it and cut it. Um, so let's see how we are going to do this. I'm going to make sure, first of all, that I've zoomed in reasonably closely to the design. Um, and then let's get rid of the side panel there. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Capture Image. What this lets me do now is download this as as a PNG, I think it is. So current document window size. No, I'm going to choose a custom size here. And I'm just going to put that, the height's the big issue here. I'm going to put the height here to 2000 because I want to have lots and lots of pixels. Uh, yet, so let's have a see here. In fact, you know, I'm going to go even bigger. Let's go, let's go 3000. For 3000, why not? Okay, I want to turn off anti aliasing and transparent background onto white background. There, I want to turn off anti aliasing here because I don't want to have uh, an area a situation where I have sort of like you know, the, the an, an edge of a black line to the white background has like this like gray fade away. I want to try to have really a nice, uh, clear edge to all the lines in this drawing. Um, okay, so let's click on confirm there. Uh, let me see, PNG, I'm going to call this. Skull wireframe version one PNG. Let's have a see what I'm going to save this to. Save to the computer, yes. And I think for the time being, I'm just going to put it into downloads. Okay, so let's come back to downloads there and have a look at what we have. So there's our wireframe skull. Now I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to open it with paint.net in our case i do like paint.net if you're a windows user it's free and i find it really intuitive and simple to use so you can see at the moment we've got a very high res image this is actually 6471 by 3000 um, and if i control with mouse and zoom in here i can see i've got lots and lots of detail happening here which is absolutely fantastic now the first thing i'm going to do is probably get a selection tool i'm just going to put a smaller bounding box around this and I'm just going to go to image and crop to selection. So I'm just working with a smaller space here. So I can see now that this is 2200 by 2700, give or take pixels in width and height. Okay, now this is really far too faint. I need to make it so the whole thing is going to stand out a lot more clearly so that when I laser engrave this, I get nice solid clear lines. So I'm going to come to the magic wand tool here. I'm going to make sure that my selection feature is going to be global and I'm going to zoom in, 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 in. And I'm going to make sure that, in fact, let's do this. I'm going to click on the white on the outside, okay? That's what I'm going to do, click on the white. And that selects basically all the whites. Now I can see that because these gray lines that make up the wireframe image are closer to white than they are black, and my tolerance is 50% for this magic wand selection, I've not selected the the gray lines but i'm going to pull this tolerance back on the white which means less and less range of white is selected to about 25 percent and you'll see now that the gray of the wireframe actually is no longer being selected as part of the white color mask i've now got let the computer update there there you go okay i've now got um all of the pale gray wireframes um as deselected as part of this white global uh, selection. I'm now going to go to edit and invert selection, which means that rather than selecting the white, I've now selected the black. And now what I'm going to do is get a brush. I'm going to make sure that this brush is big. Let's go like 500 pixels across. In fact, let's go even bigger. Let's go a thousand pixels across. I'm going to make sure my color is black. And I'm now going to basically ink over all those selected regions now because i've only selected the um the gray and black lines of the original skull image that now means that i've basically inked over everything so it's going to stand out a lot more clearly and the last thing i'm going to do with this is i'm going to go to image image and i'm going to crop down to this new selection which means that now i've just got the skull now, it's not really standing out particularly well here because I've got this transparent background. But if I, if I zoom in here, I can see that all my lines now are all consistently black. And the last thing I need to do with this now is I'm going to add a new layer here 
If you can't see all these controls, then make sure you activate them in the top right here. I'm going to come to my bucket fill. I can see that my right click gives me a white background. So I'm going to right click on that back on, on the layer two. I'm going to drag that down behind the skull. And now I can see that I've got this really detailed black on white wireframe skull image. Fantastic. Let's now uh, obviously, well, now let's, let's actually save it. Okay, let's really save this now. And again, yeah, let's save it there onto my downloads. Ideally, I'd be saving here to some secure network storage drive, like my home drive, for example. Um, let's say this is a BMP because I know that TechSoft, the software I'm going to work with for laser cutting, loves BMP images. Click on OK there, go with the default settings, flatten the image, which means it's going to combine the white background and the wireframe all into one layer there, and we are looking good. Okay, let's minimize that there, and let's have a see what I've got now in downloads. So I've got two files now called Skull Wireframe version one. One is the PNG that I downloaded from um, <clears throat> Fusion 360, um, and then the other one is the BMP, the bitmap file, um, which is where, where I basically cleaned up the image, made everything dark black, and also uh, cropped it down so I don't have a margin around the outside. And this BMP one is the one that I want to work with with the TechSoft design. So let's bring TechSoft back in again. Let's start a new image. Let's see how long has this video been going on for? Six minutes. I'm going to persevere here, folks. Let's, with this new TechSoft card file, let's make the grid here to a 5 mil grid. This is what I always do. Lines, pale blue just I find so much easier to work with. Now, uh, if I come back to my design here, I can see that the top of my base is 80 millimeters across. So I think that I could have this skull, let's say one centimeter sticking out on each side. I'm going to give that a shot. No, I'm going to make it five millimeters sticking out. I think one's going to be too much. I want to make my skull here 90 millimeters. Now, just to be clear what's happening here, I've been really precise about engineering, designing and engineering my 3D printed base because that's where the electronics goes and I've got to mount in my standardized components like my USB socket and my switch and the LED strip. That's got to be really carefully designed and engineered and manufactured. This um, this design, this wireframe image on top, basically is more of a kind of an um, an, an arts, a graphics arts element. Um, and so here, I'm not going to worry too much about precise dimensioning of you know the eye sockets and things because that's all part of the wireframe image. I'm just going to work on basically getting the width of this approximately correct for my for my for it to sit nicely on the base. Um, and my other piece of advice here is to do the base first because the base is the hard technical bit and then leave the wireframe image to the end. Anyway, let's get back on the case here. I'm going to come to this new image. I'm going to go to bitmap, import bitmap. I'm going to go to my, he says, downloads. Thank you very much. I'm going to make sure that I pick up the bitmap image here. I'm going to open this and I'm going to specify this as having a width here of 90 millimeters. Now it will actually be slightly more than 90 because you're going to see here I'm going to do basically a little margin around the outside. Okay, fix aspects width, uh, ratio, sorry, 90 width. Uh, I've got my grid, I've got grid lock turned on and there's my skull image. I'll bring this up to there for the time being. Now, thinking about this, actually I could have done this on the same CAD file as here, okay? But I'm, I'll, I'll work on a different CAD file just to keep things, I think, a bit more simple. Now, what I want to do is do a cutout of this. And so to do that, I'm gonna come back to this image right here. And I want to basically make a black mask here. I've done this before in other videos, but I'll do it again here. Let's get the magic wand tool. I've got to make sure that I have continuous as my magic wand selection feature. I'm going to click there, then I'm going to click on add. So I'm going to click on adding things to my selection here. And I want to get all the background like that. And then what I'm going to do again is invert the selection, get the brush tool. And now I just want to do a black brush over everything. So I'm making this kind of black mask of the skull. And the reason for this is because it's going to let TechSoft Design easily contour this with precision. Let's now save that again as a BMP file, and I'm going to call this black mask. Okay, let's just save that then. Let's minimize this. Let's go back into TechSoft Design, bitmap, import images. There's my black mask. I'm going to bring this in with exactly the same dimensions. Click on OK. And again, I've got gridlock turned on, which means that all of these are going to click together. Let's bring this to the side for the time being. Let's now come to 
bitmaps. I'm going to, I could contour it. I'm going to vectorize this. I think vectorizing just gives me a better finish. And I'm going to make sure I've got monochrome uh, vectorization here. Again, I've done all this before uh, in the videos. Uh, I'm going to go to custom settings. I'm going to make it maximum resolution here so I get maximum uh, precision of my contouring. And this is going to probably take about 20 seconds, hopefully. Um, when this is finished, what we should find, maybe I should pause the video, but I should find that I've got um, an outline here which will perfectly fit around this skull. Let's just pause at this point for it to finish. Okay, so that just finished there. And so if I zoom in on this, I can see several things happening. Number one, um, I've actually got several parts. I'm going to click on Control and U or Edit and Ungroup. And that means now that I can take this white background away. And I don't want that white background, so I'm going to delete it. I'm also going to zoom in on this as well and make sure there's no kind of little errors. Sometimes you get little errors on this, and it looks like that's a nice clean image. Yes, I think it is. Good. Now, let's come to Fill no fill with this and now i can bring this skull because i've got gridlock turned on pass it over the other one and i've got this perfect match the difference being that the wireframe image is a bitmap and this line is a vector so if i click on properties here with its select well, if i go to start edit sorry excuse me then i can see that this line is made up basically of thousands or hundreds anyway of individual nodes and nodes and handles and if i wanted to you know i could grab some of these and basically distort that line but i do not want to do that so let's undo it okay now what i want to do i'm going to keep this off for the time being um, what I want to do actually, I'm going to put a little contour around this. I'm going to come to the contour tool and I'm going to do like a 2.5 millimeter graphical contour around this. Boom. Like that. And actually, this is the one that I'm going to bring in and put around the skull. So let's just put that to the side for the time being. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to be having my engraved skull with this little outline. Maybe that's too much. You know what? I think that's too much. Let's come to the contour tool again. I'm going to go with a one millimeter. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I think that's going to be better. Let's, I'm going to zap that one. I'm not going to worry about that one. Let's grab this. Let's pull it across here. And again, that should just nicely snap around the outside. Okay, the uh, last thing I'm going to do here is put in my base at the bottom. Now, if I zoom in on this, I can see that my cutout here is 60 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is get a, um, uh, the, the rectangle tool here. I've got gridlock turned on. And I'm going to basically make here a 60 millimeter wide rectangular base and then extend this up. How far to extend it up? I don't know. I'm going to pull it up to about there. And then I'm going to bring this in and position it where I think it should be. Now, have a look at that. That's not bad, is it? That's kind of quite close. My feeling is that the light is not going to project through to these are this area here or this area here for like the cheekbones or the back of the skull because the light's going to shine up through the acrylic and not come to this part of the design so actually what i what i'm thinking of doing here is making it so that this is going to be kind of roughly in the center now i can see that that is 30 and that is 30 there so oh sorry should i say that's 15 and 15 let's just get some dimension lines on here i can see that that distance there is 90 yeah so i can see that that distance there is going to be 15 and hence that's going to be 15 as well okay so i'm going to actually let's just see i'm going to bring this up now i think with my base something that i need to look at here is the fact that this base here has a depth of 15 millimeters so i'm going to imagine that's about 10 for going into this cutout so let's just bring that down here yeah i'm going to make it so that this is going to be is 15 going to be too much i think what i'm going to do here is set the step spacing here to 2.5 i do this an awful lot as well which means i'm going to bring this up to basically 12.5 so this is going to be 2.5 sticking out here no i think i'm going to leave it there i'm going to leave it there uh let me see i'm going to I'm going to go to start edit. I'm going to add, click on that line, add a node, and bring that node down to yes, to there. Select this line, add a node, bring that node down to here. So when I fit this in, it's just going to be kind of you know sticking out so far. And then uh, I'm going to get, I could have an angle. 
let's see what an angle looks like. I'm going to click off that line and then now I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to decide where I want that to go. I think it's going to go to about there and this is going to go to about, I could have the same point, couldn't I? So the C, if I zoom in here, yeah, I'm going to put that to there. And it means that this, this chin here is just sticking out a little bit there. I'm not sure about how that looks. And I feel as if the whole thing as well, the whole skull, the way it's positioned here, I'm actually going to select those nodes. I'm going to pull them 2.5 to the right there because I think it, the skull wants to be you know, centered more to this point of the skull here. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I'm still going to have the chin sticking out here. I'm, I'm going to run with that and see how that looks. Okay, cool. Let's click off there. And the last thing I'm going to do now is get my contour tool with a zero millimeter contour graphical spacing. I'm going to click on the outside edge of the entire contour here. Whoops. And I want to make sure I do that in blue. So I've undone that. Let's do that again. And then now what I'm going to do is select that blue contour, select the skull with shift, select, copy those, grid lock on, paste them in, pull it over to here and that is the image I'm going to laser engrave which hopefully is then going to slide perfectly into the top of my light okay I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video here I'm going to go ahead and do this and then we'll see how it looks okay so I have finished the laser cutting and one of the things I did with this is when I, before I laser cut I took this image I grouped all together so control G and I mirrored it because I want to have it so that the engravings on the back of the acrylic i find that that works uh, a little a lot more 3d if i do that okay well anyway let's see what we've got here now i've turned the lights off in the room <laughs> so that we get the full effect and let's have a look at um how this is going to work now then unfortunately because if i turn the lights off i can't see what i'm doing and also i've realized as well that i've only got a tiny little cable here but we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do let's see i've got my usb hub here covered by wires and all sorts let's just do that let's have a see um i've got a bunch of things oh hang on a second now oh, look i've got a spare cable here i don't have to use the small one i've got a longer one right here thank goodness for that so um i'll just point out here that i've put the micro usb socket here upside down because then it uh, stops the metal casing of the usb um socket here from falling off so easily it kind of sandwiches it between the 3d print and the printed circuit board okay of course you micro usb um only goes in one way Let's put that in here. Let's turn it on. It's going to be bright. There we are. Gosh, that is very bright. So that's working. I've done a cutout here um, to go on the top here. Uh, and I've got a finger cutout here so I can pull it away as well. So let's just see how that fits. In fact, before I do, look, here's my, here's my skull. I'm just going to see how this fits in there. Yeah, that feels fine. Have they got damaged? No, they're okay. That's fine. Okay, and I've done this in like this frosted white because I thought it looked quite nice with the 3D print as well. That looked quite professional there. And if I turn that on now, you can also see how the whole thing kind of is glowing as well, which is quite cool. A glowing base. And then here we go. If I put my skull in, now is this going to fit? Yes, it does. And let's have a see how that looks. Well, I don't know whether you get the full effect from the camera here because I've got the glow here from the base. But if I put my hands there, that is looking pretty awesome, I have to say. This is with light gathering yellowish acrylic. So you don't quite see the yellow effect there, but I have to say that looks really, really smart. I almost wish here I kind of tilted the skull back a bit, looking at the base here. I don't know whether you can turn it off here perhaps. Well, you can't really see, but here it's like there's an awful lot of kind of space here. And I think, yeah, the skull should have been tilted around a bit there for the full effect, but yeah. Oh, hang on, take the paper away. That might help, mightn't it? Okay, as well, maybe there's too many lines in this, or maybe what I need to do here as well is engrave the lines a little bit more deeply. Perhaps it's not so clear here on the video, but when I look at this in real life, no, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, there you go. Now, I'm actually going to add one more video to this because I'm going to show you how you can put text into Fusion 360 and have like 3D text on the drawing as well. So that's going to be like a little extension feature there. But that basically is my light looking really good. I have to say in the video there, it just looks like a, an intense amount of white light, but it does look really cool um, in, uh, you know, when I look at it here. Okay, cool. So we'll stop the video here and we'll have one more looking at 3D text.